Welcome back to CSFL Media Days here at SprintFootball.com. And we are joined by Jim Kelly, head coach at Caldwell University. Coach, thank you very much for joining us. First question, uh, you were one of the few teams that got to play a game last year. You guys played in the spring. You played against a regional rival, local rival, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. Just talk about that spring practice in that you had practices where you could instruct and teach your players, but at the same time, you actually had practices where you were doing game plan install and, and getting ramped up for an opponent. And, uh, and you guys did win that game. Just talk about that experience of spring ball and playing a game and how that can help carry over into this fall for you guys. Yeah, Doug, first of all, thanks for having me on the show. And I, I also think that realize that our guys really got a lot out of it as far as preparation, but also in the midst of the pandemic, how to handle themselves, you know, with discipline and doing all the right things on and off the field. I, I know that really doesn't, you know, sometimes show in, in the big picture on the scoreboard, but this, in fact, was a big advantage for us as far as the protocol during the pandemic and also how to prepare yourself for a game on and off the field with discipline and time management. Uh, as far as on the field, you know, some guys got some valuable experience. I thought our seniors were the first actually class that came to Caldwell and played, started the program here, were able to leave on a high note. There was, you know, six or seven of them were able to participate in the game. Unfortunately, some because of uh, certain situations and limitations during COVID were not, were not able to participate, but I was happy for them. But overall, for the program, anytime you get to get on the field and prepare for an opponent, it gives you, you know, kind of a good feel about, you know, your guys are able to access, our coaching staff is able to access not only our players, but we're doing, trying to, like you said, install whether it be offense or defense or your special teams. So we kind of left, uh, well, I would say on a high note, uh, at the same point, we understand that, uh, you know, you're only as good as you, you're not as good as you think you are. Sometimes you're somewhere in between and we're, you know, we're eager to get back on the field this year, hopefully in a more quote unquote, a little bit more normal at, at times, but it was a very valuable experience for our staff, our young players, and for our seniors to leave uh, the program in that type of note. Uh, looking at the offensive side of the ball this year, uh, who are some names that we should probably get familiar with, uh, whether it returnees that aren't just going to be playmakers for you, but provide leadership and experience? And maybe there are some newcomers that could be factoring into the mix. Talk to us a little bit about yeah, the offense. Yeah. Uh, the offense, you know, we're very happy as far as our mental approach right now in, in preseason. Uh, I like our returning linemen. I think, you know, uh, most offenses are only as good as their linemen, uh, in, uh, you know, as far as what you do up front. And I'm happy with, you know, our, with all of our linemen, really. But there, our three mainstays are Derek Mickleman, who will be a senior. Uh, he's actually an all-league performer in uh, 2019. And then we have two guards, Hunter Pine and Andres Gonzalez, that had experience in the nucleus of our offensive line. On the outside, in our uh, returners, I like uh, you know the speed and explosiveness of Jeremy Colon, who had very actually a very nice game in, in the spring game, and Adir Orsini. Those are guys who bring valuable experience. At the quarterback spot, which is always your trigger man, uh, you know Frank DeMeo, an academic, an all academic uh, team uh, representation in 2019 has switched from receiver to quarterback and gives us all the intangibles as a leader. Uh, besides being able to throw the ball, he really has a good understanding of our system and whether to distribute the ball. He's really of our quote unquote, our point guard as far as our offensive goes. Uh, in the fullback spot, Jojo Mangeli returns uh, for a valuable fullback. And I would say at the tailback spot, why we're young in other spots, tailback on the receiver spots, I think it's tailback by committee right now. And we're competing for that. And also the receivers, while they're young, I think if, if youth serves us well, we're going to be, we could be very dynamic. Uh, defensively, take us uh, kind of through that side of the ball. Uh, okay. You know, is there a unit in particular? Are you, are you looking for uh, depth or experience up front and that front seven? Is it the secondary that provides it? Just talk about that and some names that, uh, we, uh, we may be seeing a lot this year. Okay. Yeah, from the returners, uh, you know, I, we have, you know, Anthony Garino, a linebacker, and Jamal Reedus. Jamal will be going to his third year, and uh, we're hoping for big leadership things from him. Up front on, on the down, down people, I, was, I thought that Messiah Porter, who gives us some length, had a nice spring, and also should return and give us some uh, depth there. And also Michael Lorman, a defensive tackle. As far as some other spots in the front seven, again, very competitive. Okay, we are – 
overall, we are young. We lost the big, you know, senior class last year. So, but we feel very comfortable with the people that are going to be competing in that front seven. As far as the secondary, we're definitely, we're very athletic there. But again, there's a lot of competition. And not, to give you names right now would be very uh, doing the young men a disservice because right now there's some people competing for spots at the same point, making us a better program on both sides of the board. But our defense is going to be very athletic and be able to compete. Just talk about that on, on the back end for you guys defensively in the secondary. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice luxury to have, isn't it, when you have a lot of athleticism back there because it, it allows you, you know, if, if somebody can go one-on-one -on -one with the other team's receiver, it allows you some, some different uh, um, stunts or things like that you could do with your uh, front seven, isn't it? Well, you, that's not bad. You want to hire for defensive corner, I'm going to hire as an assistant defense. Right, right on, you're right on the money with that. We've already talked about that. In other words, what type of our, what defensive backs in our system can we put on an island, okay, and actually, you know, maybe dial us some defense, some blitzes, so, you know, the hurt what the other teams are doing against us. But we feel comfortable that, you know, some of our defensive backs can play that spot, can play in an island where we can maybe, you know, do some exotic blitzes, some things to help or take away some of the things that people are doing. But anytime you have secondary guys that can run and, and use proper technique with their other defensive, uh, you know, other players uh, in the league, I think that's very important, especially in our league, because you see a lot of guys that can all run. It's all going to be, you know, where the matchups are and how you can take advantage of the matchups. And looking at uh, special teams, uh, you know, kicking game, return game, uh, how is that shaping up for you guys? Uh, you know, we work, we've worked well on the kicking game, and not so much the return game, but, you know, we work, uh, we have a return of George Escobar, who's, a, you know, a place kicker and a punter, Christian Cornelius, who was a senior who, who because of COVID, cannot play in the uh, in the uh, spring, but he's, he was able to he's going to be able to participate in the fall. So we do have some kind of you know I would say we have legs for the kicking game, but we're always interested in about the operation and everything else. And, and we, we talk about especially in week one the dynamics of in this league. Special teams could turn you know we can flip fields. In other words, if you're able to flip fields, any type of you can do that with your special teams. You know we've been stressing that and how important it is, especially in week one. It's the unknowns when you're going into a, a live game. Uh, obviously, we have a bye week one, but going into week one, the special teams become they're really the unknown, and hopefully, you're able to do some good things with our special teams. Coach, best of luck this season. Looking forward to uh, seeing how the Cougars do this year. Well, thank you very much, and always a great uh, to have a chat with you. Thanks very much.